Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So in this uh, uh, lecture we will uh, discuss about the size enlargement, its uh, uh, introduction, main categories of size enlargement applications and uh, as we already discussed about that uh, in the previous two modules, what is the particle uh, characteristics how that particle you know or solid and fluid can be uh, interacting to you know yield a certain process uh, yield or process output and uh, also we have discussed that uh, what are the uh, different uh, characteristics of the solid particles and then we have discussed uh, how to you know reduce the size of the particles to get the more interfacial area and what are those mechanism to you know get that uh, size uh, reduction now in this uh, module uh, also, we will discuss uh, something uh, that is about uh, that how to increase uh, the uh, size of the particle that is basically a size enlargement process. So, here in this lecture only uh, introduction on that size enlargement will be uh, discussed and in the successive lecture we will discuss uh, about its mechanism and also what are the basic equipments that are being used for this size enlargement here. And uh, here this main question is that what is uh, size enlargement, where that size in the enlargement uh, process or uh, why we are going to do the enlargement of the size, this is uh, main uh, thing here. So size enlargement is uh, the process by which smaller particles are put together to form you know larger masses without uh, changing uh, its original uh, particle identity. So uh, it is called particle or uh, particle size enlargement. Uh, it is mainly associated with the pharmaceutical, agricultural, food industries, minerals, metallurgical and uh, ceramic industries. There you will see that sometimes you need to have the granular forms of the powders to you know deliver it to a particular uh, customer demand. So there uh, in this picture you will see that uh, some uh, powder it will become you know that uh, granular forms whereas the powder will have uh, the particle size of micro or nano size. So after you know uh, converting into its granular form you will see that size of that particles will be increased that means here the individual particles come in together and making a you know agglomeration okay or cluster you can say and then uh, giving a certain uh, shape of that you know agglomeration. So uh, this is basically the uh, process based on which you are getting that you know size enlargement. But for this size enlargement of course you have to add some additives so that there should uh, process of binding of that particles uh, in the powder to get its uh, you know uh, granular form. So we will be discussing uh, one by one all those things. So why size enlargement important you can say that if you are getting that uh, uh, enlarged size of that particles that cannot uh, be said that it will be a very huge size of course it will be a limited or control size of that you know materials or uh, powders to form its you know useful uh, one. So to reduce the caking and lamp formation sometimes it is required to make that particle into a coarser uh, size. And also uh, creation of non-segregation mixers of ingredients there. Sometimes you will see that some particles will be you know always uh, stays in segregate mode that cannot be you know intermix or from that you know uh, ingredients uh, you know sometimes it is required to you know bind together and making a you know that effective uh, size of that particles for a specific use. So in that case you have to you know combine that non segregating particles with some binders to form its uh, you know particular size. So that is why it is required to you know that size enlargement for this purpose. Now production of useful uh, you know structural form sometimes you will see that you need to have some structural form of uh, you know solid materials either to you know give in a deliberate form or for packing or some other useful uh, you know uh, manner for which that is required. So in that case you need to have that you know enlargement of the size 
and also you will see that sometimes you need to improve the flow properties. If you are having more finer particles, you will see that there will be frictional resistance will be higher. Whereas, if you are getting the coarser particles to deliver to a uh, or transport from one uh, location to another location either through conduits or by you know that uh, built conveyor or some other means there itself it is required sometimes that enlarging that size which will be very you know that uh, easier to uh, you know transport that material at that particular size of that material. In that case frictional resistance may be uh, you know reduced for that you know coarser particles and energy consumption will be less. So, that is why you need to improve that flow properties just by you know enlarging the particle. So, it is uh, sometimes required for the transportation of the material as well as uh, you know that some other you know characteristics suppose flow reactors they are also to uh, operate that continuous process by you know movement of the solid particles there. So, uh, in that case uh, for some optimum uh, particle size is required to get that you know better yield for the process. So, uh, there also uh, it is required to uh, enlargement of the uh, particle size. Then to provide a definite uh, quantity of that active ingredient for a particular you know uh, you can say that uh, use uh, like you know that to make the tablet you have to you know give some you know definite uh, amount of you know ingredients for making that tablet. So, whenever uh, you are giving that uh, definite amount of you know ingredients to make that tablet you have to have some optimum uh, size of that particles. You cannot use that very finer you cannot use uh, even very coarser particles. So, optimum size is required. So, uh, it is designed as per that you know ingredient properties as well as other you know uh, physical properties of the you know material. And then uh, to improve the product uh, appearance also sometimes you will see that for very uh, fine particles that uh, appearance of the particles will be different from coarser uh, particles. So, for coarser particles sometimes you will see that uh, it, it looks very uh, good uh, or appear uh, nicely other than you know fine particles they are sometimes it is required to enlarge that size. Also uh, to you know control that porosity and hardness it is also required to get the optimum size in that case from finer to uh, coarser particle is required. Also to increase the bulk density of the materials for storage it there. So, you cannot store that particles very fine or form rather than you know that coarser one. So, in that case you have to have that optimum size of the particles. Also control of surface to volume ratio in a catalyst supports that is also required for a particular chemical reactions you need to have that optimum size of the catalyst particle there itself it is required to increase that particle size. Sometimes you will see that nanoparticle uh, sometimes it will be you know coated with some other you know polymeric substance to give it the better you know activity in the chemical reaction. Sometimes nanoparticles cannot be you know in the solid form used in that chemical reactions maybe in the uh, liquid it will be dissoluted. But uh, to get that uh, you know uh, crystal or the solid form of that nanoparticles you need to have that you know increment of the size just by coating that uh, materials by some other substances. So, in that case enlargement of the size is you know important. Now, control of solubility also important here you can control that solubility by in changing the size of the particle. Now, where uh, this size enlargement can be applied? Uh, let us uh, discuss one by one here one application it is given that pharmaceutical industries you will see that size enlargement is used to manufacture tablets especially granulation is one of the size enlargement process that is utilized in order to improve both flow and compression characteristics. Now, agglomeration uh, is used uh, in pharmaceutical products for them not to contain to have low amounts of dust to provide increased safety during the handling and processing of toxic or medicinally active uh, materials. So, in pharmaceutical industries this size enlargement is important. 
in chemical industries you will see that also that agglomeration can act as a you know method to enhance a product providing desired size distributions or product geometry for increased functionality better consumer perception or you know that uh, protection uh, of the end user from such hazardous or as dust and other uh, possibly toxic or hazardous effects so sometimes you will see that uh, very fine particles that hazardous effectivity will be there which cannot be controlled by simple way but there are uh, sometimes that uh, uh, very fine particulate materials to make it uh, you know coarser one you can you know uh, that separate it from the other particles and then uh, you can separate those toxicity or toxic material or hazardous uh, material from the you know mixer so in that way you can you know protect the users uh, just by converting it into uh, you know higher size material to segregate that hazardous material as an example is that pigments uh, you will see that uh, since they tend to be dusty and exhibit unfavorable flow and bad metering characteristics there so for that uh, you need to you know have that optimum size of that material they are often micro agglomerated thus they become dust free smoothly flowing and withstand handling and shipping without degradation so here uh, you need to have more uh, control of that size uh, just by you know enhancing its uh, size uh, from its you know fine uh, particles or nano particles or micro particles uh, just by agglomerating but you are you will see that again that size of the agglomeration will be you know micron size so it is called the micro agglomeration so that micro agglomeration can be produced from that nano size and uh, it can be controlled uh, where you can get that uh, dust free or uh, you know smoothly uh, flowing uh, material uh, where you can easily ship uh, without its degradation in food industries you will see that application in food processing are you will see that uh, numerous there and uh, are becoming increasingly important uh, more because there you will see sometimes you will see that uh, some structured foods you are actually preferring so for making that structured food uh, sometimes to prepare it you have to increase the size of the food uh, ingredients and also uh, making a certain shape with that you know food ingredients so size enlargement applications you will see that they are uh, in food industries are uh, generally used in the process uh, where different aims such as improving uh, handling and flowability reducing dusting or material losses producing structural that is very useful in forms and also enhancing the appearance etc size enlargement uh, you will see that through agglomeration is used to manufacture instant food products thus uh, you will see that uh, it decreases the density where the size of the agglomerates usually ranges from 0.2 to 2 millimeters so in that case instant uh, foods reduce uh, drudgery and time preparation and in induce uh, you know uh, improved functional properties like uh, you will see that quick uh, rehydration like that and also uh, it is widely used in animal uh, feed industry size enlargement like uh, you know by uh, agglomeration uh, which is used in the animal feed industry to improve flow storage transportation metering and feeding behavior and also uh, prevent losses and dust annoyance uh, it is also by agglomeration is used in animal feeding in veterinary uh, medicine for the you know treatment of sick animals also this you know enlarged size product uh, is a, a replacement for whole milk in which the you know butter first removed uh, for mostly human consumption is is replaced by a cheaper animal or vegetable uh, fat so in this direction this enlargement of the size uh, of the uh, particle is important you will see that in mining and metallurgical industries sometimes you know that processing of the iron ore from where that steel is uh, made so in that case uh, enlargement of iron ore through agglomeration is sometimes required so iron ore is actually preferred in the form of pellets rather than particles since the configuration of iron ore powder in the blast furnace where that steel is produced is more tightly packed and restricts the air flow 
and also you will see that size enlargement through weight agglomeration there are uh, different uh, types of agglomeration you will see that mainly two types one is uh, wet agglomeration and then dry agglomeration we will discuss the mechanism of that wet and dry agglomeration in the uh, next lecture so there are size enlargement through wet agglomeration and uh, uh, after that you know it is used to you know combine metal or you can say that metal bearing powders by dry mixing you know to yield that formulated alloying components for the final products to become a dust free and easily handleable granular uh, products in the you know steel industry. And then application uh, uh, also in the ceramic industries uh, the size enlargement is required they are like they are doing that size enlargement by agglomeration. In this case uh, you will see that to make this uh, uh, raw materials with the additives uh, for making that you know ceramic material. Uh, you need to you know mix with that additives to make it a pellet forms or granular forms for their you know storage as well as handling properties of ceramic raw materials and additives. Also you will see that these agglomerations will enhance the fine powders flow properties and packing efficiency. In agricultural industries you will see that size enlargement of fertilizers through granulation is uh, you know mainly used uh, for uh, getting you know or ensuring that friability, freedom from caking and improved you know that uh, agro technical properties of the you know fertilizer. You will see that in fertilizer industries you will see sometimes whatever molten urea is uh, actually uh, produced that uh, actually is converted to granular form uh, in a fluidized bed you will see that molten urea is passed from uh, top of the you know fluidized bed uh, as a molten form and uh, it is a sprayed in a cooled air which is supplied from the bottom of that fluidized bed and uh, you will see at a certain uh, you know temperature control and pressure those sprayed molten uh, you know urea will be converting into a granular forms in a, in a, in a cool uh, you know atmosphere of that air supply. Uh, but they are then uh, you are, you are that uh, whatever form that is called granular form that is actually supplied uh, for the you know commercial use. So that is why in the fertilizer industries the granulation process is very important uh, especially at the final stage of that urea making. And then uh, in construction industries of course we are seeing that particulate solids such as sand and naturally occurring you know binders such as clay. Uh, are generally mixed and formed or enlarged into a rectangular shapes which is dried and then uh, later fried to obtain really unusable building uh, you know materials. Then uh, cosmetic industry you will see that size enlargement is used in the uh, cosmetic industry to enhance the you know appearance of the product. The particle size to create purely and uh, you know shimmering uh, looks affect that degree of you will see that glimmer the products ok. And also the smaller the particle size the less uh, you know uh, lustrous the powder will be there and the more coverage it gives thus uh, that larger particle size is preferred when made into larger masses in that application since it gives a you know glitter luster and also is more transparent. So that is why in cosmetic industries that enlargement of the size is you know important uh, especially for uh, enhancing the appearance of the product. Then uh, you will see that some other things that whenever you are uh, going to enlarge the size uh, from the powder material to make into a uh, you know granular forms some uh, you will see that uh, characteristics of that you know materials uh, will be you know considered. Uh, out of which you can say that some will be it is called uh, interfacial bondings where you will see that uh, whenever granular forms will be there or granular will be made from that binding of individual uh, solid particles or fine particles there it is required some you know binding agent it is called you know binders uh, we will discuss that you know binders will show that different types of binders there. And uh, by that binders you will see that the particle particle uh, interaction will be you know enhanced and there are some uh, you know interaction force will be acting between the particles or among the particles uh, in a powder 
uh, based on which you will see that uh, this uh, size enlargement will be there or granular form would be made. So, what are those interfacial uh, bonds or uh, bonding forces that you have to know? So, there you will see that uh, five mechanisms are responsible uh, for you know making that granulars uh, or uh, uh, size enlargement where uh, interparticle forces are you know important that mechanism responsible for interparticle forces that operating during and after agglomeration. But uh, in this case uh, generally you have to have the stable agglomeration process uh, just by controlling that different bonding forces. What are those forces that you have to know? Like one is called uh, Van der Waals forces and then forces due to it is called uh, adsorbed liquid layers and then uh, liquid breezes and electrostatic forces and solid breezes. These are five uh, types of that uh, mechanism coupling with that forces uh, will be you know important for that granulation process to know. So, here uh, we will discuss those uh, forces how they are acting on that uh, particles. Then uh, you will see that uh, main uh, you know forces are uh, Van der Waals forces, forces due to adsorbed liquid layers, forces due to liquid breezes, electrostatic forces, forces due to solid breezes. Now, Van der Waals forces uh, you know that they are exist molecularly based uh, you know attractive forces between all solids that is called Van der Waals forces. And uh, in this case, uh, there will be some energy of these forces, which will be in the order of 0 0.1 electron volt, and uh, uh, which is decreases with the sixth power of the distance between molecules. And the ranges of Van der Waals forces is uh, large compared with that of a chemical bonds. So they are uh, the particle-particle bonding mainly uh, because of these Van der Waals forces. And based on which that agglomeration will get its stabilized form to uh, give you that particular shape of that granules. So here uh, that attractive force between solids will be uh, mainly dominating by that Van der Waals forces. Now that attractive force uh, generally represented by this FVW, uh, it acts uh, between a sphere and a plane surface as a result of Van der Waals forces which is actually derived by Hamakar and is usually presented in the form like this. So, F V W will be equal to K H R 1 R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2 into 6 R square. Here K H is called the Hamakar constant. It has a strong correlation with the various physical phenomena such as liquid weightability, adhesion, friction, adsorption, colloidal stability, polymer flow and also deformation of the particles. And uh, its value generally ranges from 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.4 to uh, 4.0 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule. And uh, uh, other terms like R1 and R2, these are the radius of the particles or spheres uh, in the powders. And then uh, small r square here, it is basically the gap between two particles or the spheres. So, in this way you can easily calculate what will be the Van der Waal force there in the agglomeration or agglomerates or granules whenever it will be formed there. Now, forces due to adsorbed liquid layer is another uh, you know important points there for making that uh, granules or uh, for enlargement of the size. Here like particles in the presence of a condensable vapor will have a layer of adsorbed vapor on their surface. Here one particles, if this particles is placed in the you know condensable vapor, you will see that there will be a layer forming surrounding this particle. And you will see that the strength of the bond is, will be depending on the area of contact and the tensile strength of the adsorbed layer. So, in this case one layer will be formed adsorbed liquid layer it is called on the surface and the strength of that bond will be depending on the area of contact and the tensile strength of the adsorbed layer. If these particles are in contact bonding forces which will result from the overlapping of the adsorbed layers. 
and the thickness and strength of the layer increase with increasing partial pressure of the vapor in the surrounding atmosphere on which you are placing that particle or powder. According to Coelho and uh, Hanby, you will see that in 1978, they are actually uh, stated that there will be some critical partial pressure at which the adsorbed layer bonding gives way to liquid breeze bonding. So that means there are two particles if come in contact. So between that particles there will be a you know adsorbed liquid layer and over which there will be a some partial pressure. So there will be some you know critical partial pressure at which this adsorbed layer bonding between these two particles gives way to liquid breeze bonding. That means there will be a liquid breeze between that particles. So that bonding will be happened only beyond this critical partial pressure. Then forces due to liquid breezes. Now whenever that liquid breezes will be formed like this here two particles and between that there will be a you know liquid breeze. Now you will see that in addition to that inter particle forces that is van der Waal forces there are another forces that will result from this adsorbed liquid layer. The presence of liquid on the surface of the particles that affects the inter particle forces by the smoothing effect on the surface or by increasing particle particle contact or by its effect of reducing the inter particle distance. Now these forces are usually negligible in magnitude compared with forces resulting when the proportion of liquid present will be sufficient to form that inter particle liquid breezes. Okay? So here uh, what are the forces that maybe you know that some you know surface tension forces, capillary pressure forces there. So these forces you will see that maybe you know that ineffective in magnitude compared with the this uh, you know bonding forces of uh, making you know liquid breezes. Now forces due to liquid breezes in the case of uh, different uh, you know form of that agglomeration you will see that different types of you know orientation of that you know binding liquids which will give you that different you know shape or different uh, states okay different states of that formation of that or binding or binding states of that you know particulate materials by that uh, binding liquids or binding agents. And uh, in this case uh, Newitt and uh, Conway Jones 1958 they have identified four types of liquid states depending on the proportion of liquid uh, present between that means group of particles. And these states are known as like this one is called pendular states, another is called funicular states another is called capillary state and then droplet state. So these are different uh, you know types of liquid states will be there based on the proportion of liquid present between groups of particles okay, as shown in the picture here. As the proportion of that liquid to particles is increased you will see that the liquid will be free to move and the attractive force between particles will decrease. When there is sufficient liquid to completely fill the industrial pores between the particles, especially you know that capillary pores, the granule strength will fall down and uh, it will fall uh, further as there are fewer carved liquid surfaces and fewer boundaries for surface tension forces to act on. And you will see that when the particles are completely dispersed in the liquid that will come as a droplet form the strength of the structure will be you know very low. And uh, in case of pendular breezes here this pendular uh, breeze you will see that this pendular breeze will give you the strong granules in which the quantity of liquid is not critical but should be less than that required to move into the funicular and uh, capillary uh, states. Then another uh, important force uh, which is acting on that uh, liquid and liquid uh, which is forming uh, liquid and uh, particles or particle and uh, particles. You will see that uh, this electrostatic force 
will say that this electrostatic charging of particles and surfaces sometimes occurs as a result of friction that is caused by interparticle collisions and frequent rubbing of particles against equipment surfaces during processing. So, whenever particles will be used to make it granular forms, there will be some interaction between particles, there will be some attrition between particles, there will be some collision between particles. So, during that particles collision, you know, there will be some, you know, that electrostatic charge will form, okay, on the surface. As a result of that friction or collision caused by that interparticle collisions and frequent rubbing of that particles against that equipment surfaces during the process, the surge will be caused by the transfer of electrons between the bodies. And the force between two surge spheres will be proportional to the product of their, you know, surges. Now, this electrostatic forces may be attractive or repulsive that do not require contact between particles and can act over relatively long distance that compared with it is called additional forces which require the contact between the particles. So, here one important point that the electrostatic forces also will be you know one important component to bind the liquid or make the granules there and it is happened because of that collision between the particles, rubbing of that particles with the surface of the equipment. And also during that you know collision there will be a transfer of you know electrons between the bodies and because of which you will see that there will be electrostatic charging. And these charging forces or electrostatic forces between two charged spheres will be proportional to the product of their charges, which can be expressed by this equation here. What will be the charge forces will be there? That will be is equal to k into q1 q2 by r square, whereas q1 and q2 are the you know charge density and r is equal to distance between two you know charge particles. And then another important point during that you know granulation uh, uh, process or making the enlargement of the size. In that case, it is called solid bridges. Sometimes solid materials will make a bonding between two particles. In that case, granules formed by liquid bridges are usually not the end product in this case. You will see whereas, you will see that more permanent bonding within the granule will be created or will be you know enhanced by solid bridges that is formed as liquid which is removed from the original granule. I think you understand here see in the picture there is a solid bridge, here there is no you know liquid bridges forming. Okay? So, finally, this solid you know bonding will be there, solid bridge will be uh, making to make this you know agglomerates. Solid bridges between particles may take three forms, one is crystalline bridges, another will be liquid binder bridges and then solid binder bridges. So, this is the solid binder bridges and if the material of the particles is soluble in the liquid added to create granules, the crystalline bridges may be formed when the liquid evaporates. Okay? So, it is important that crystalline bridges will form when the liquid will evaporate there. Some you know binding solvent will be used as you know uh, which is very you know that volatile. So, when after uh, you know bonding of that you know liquid breeze and then uh, uh, finally, solid breeze you will see that some you know uh, binding agent uh, that is which is very volatile it will be you know uh, evaporates and then uh, uh, after evaporation that uh, crystals forms of that you know uh, granules will be there. And the relative magnitude of the different bonds as a function of particle size can be you know uh, interpreted or can be represented by you know making a map like uh, here shown. In this case you will see that if we consider the tensile strength of suppose granules after making bonding or size enlargement or making granules, the what will be the size of that granules? Let it be considered as a particle diameter. 
So, in this case if you represent this tensile strength versus particle diameter, you will see at a certain range of particle diameter the tensile strength will be you know prominent or to get the you know less effective tensile strength you have to produce a certain range of particles to have the optimum size of the granules just by controlling the different forces whenever they are making a bond. So, in this case in this map it is shown that the tensile strength versus particle diameter and there are some region it is shown here this region is it is called van der Waals that means in this region within a size range of this particle and this range of this you know tensile strength here the van der Waals force will be dominating compared to the other whereas within this region you will see that van der Waals in the presence of adsorbed liquid layers will be dominating there and in this region here only liquid bridges will be effective whereas other forces will not be effective there. And then beyond these three regions there will be another region it is called solid bridges. So, that solid bridges will be formed only within this particle range particle size range and the strength of the you know at the strength of the material. So, here we can say from the combination of this tensile strength and the particle diameter which force will be dominating and which force will not be dominating or effective that can be assessed. So, van der Waals force will become important only for particles below 1 micron in size that you have to remember and adsorbed vapor forces that will be very relevant below the particle size will be 80 microns. Whereas, the liquid bridges forces are will be more effective or active you can say below about 500 micron size particle. Okay. And then you will see that we are talking about here the size enlargement there should be a certain process to make this size enlargement. There are different process available though all the process are will be of same mechanism only thing is that some terms will be used to represent the operation of that size enlargement by different uh, you know types of industries. There are different terms of that size enlargement process like called compaction, it is called granulation, sometimes it is called encapsulation, sometimes it is called uh, you know pelletizing and sometimes it is called agglomeration. So, these actually terms are basically the same that size enlargement, but as per industry brand they are giving the different terms, but their you know basic mechanism will be same for that size enlargement. Here compaction basically you will see that the process involving large deformations, large strain, non-linear material behavior and friction where granulation whenever you are talking about it transforms a powder material into larger entities to end up with an agglomerate or you can say aggregate considerably larger in size and with a porous structure. Whereas, encapsulation it is in uh, you will see that pharmaceutical industry or pelletizing in the pharmaceutical industries. In the encapsulation it is said that this process whereby you know various ingredients can be stored within a specific size shell or coating for protection and or later release. And pelletizing in this case it is uh, the process of compressing or molding a material into shape of a pellet and then agglomeration it is basically the formation of assemblage in a suspension and particles dispersed in the liquid phases stick to each other and form irregular particle clusters flocks or agglomerates. So, these are called agglomeration. So, there are several processes almost the same mechanism, but their name is different. So, in this case uh, we will discuss only that you know as per that syllabus the undergraduate syllabus we will discuss some mechanism of granulation process in the next lecture. Okay. So, before uh, you know uh, completing that we are coming to the you know uh, some point here that some you will see that some uh, binding agents to be used for 
that agglomeration process to make that granular forms. So, in this case, in this case it is called excipients. Excipients for granulation can be largely divided into categories like bulking agents, functional uh, additives and others like coolants, coating aids, stabilizers, pH modifiers and release rate modifiers. And bulking agents or sometimes it is called filers okay, serve to form the core or structure of a doses form. And functional additives include binders, disintegrants, you know that lubricants, colorants and stabilizing agents. And these bulking agents generally differ from the functional additives in that they are usually inert materials that are relatively very you know inexpensive. The choice of excipients depends on the number of factors like you know drug, which drug you are going to use, the process that you are following and the formulator and also the matter of cost. So, bulking agents generally common bulking agents are sugar, lactose, you know stars, microcrystalline cellulose, dicalcium phosphate like that. Some functional additives like binders, disintegrants, lubricants, stabilizing agents, colorants like that. Now, binders may be you know wide varieties, some may be will be sugars and some will be maybe polymer and some natural polymer, some will be you know synthetic polymer, even semi synthetic polymers are there. Sugar like sucrose, glucose, sorbitol, those are used for binders. Natural polymers like acacia, alginic acid, sodium, alginate, gelatin, etc., are used. The semi synthetic binders like ethyl cellulose, sodium carboxymethyl cellulose, these are being used. Synthetic binders like polyvinyl pyrrolidone, uh, they are used. Polyethylene glycol, generally used. Natural binders like you know Khea gum, you will see that uh, Gillan gum, those are being used. Others like isopropyl alcohol, chloroform, those are also used as a binder solution. And uh, why that binder solutions to be used there? The main role of binders is to provide the cohesiveness which is very required for the binding of the solid particles under compaction to get the certain shape of that you know granules or tablets or some other forms. You will see that binders also uh, improve the hardness of the tablets by enhancing intra granular as well as you know intergranular forces. Also you will see that the cohesive properties of the binders reduce the freeability of the tablets and also like polyethylene glycol which is used as a binder uh, is in a melt granulation which is very important uh, in both wet massing and fluid bed granulation. So, they are uh, those are actually very important to give a certain you know cohesiveness uh, force to give a controllable size. And uh, as per that scope of that level of course, the details of granular process will be discussed in the next uh, you know uh, successive lectures and what is the mechanism and what are the basic equipments will be uh, you know used for that granular process will be discussed in the next lectures. So, thank you, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.